I'm Leo Walder for Kit Guru, and this little white box here is the QNAP TAS268 NAS powering this colossal 28-inch uh, Acer display here over a uh, HDMI. The um, model code tells us a great deal about this NAS. We're used to QNAP saying TS something or other. The TAS, the A stands for Android. This NAS runs both QTS and Android simultaneously. If we look at this uh, screen here, this is familiar to anyone that's used a QNAP NAS. This is your, your uh, QTS interface with your various stations, photos, movies, music, and such like, settings and so on. And uh, that's what you see in this instance when you're connected directly, but you'd also see it where you're connected across a network. I have to say, actually, this uh, 4K display is probably displaying it's like 720p or something awful with this uh, with this NAS, uh, so it looks a bit weird. You don't normally see the icons looking that huge, but uh, when you look across the network, it actually looks rather slicker and crisper than this, and the icons are smaller. Taking that to one side. Um, so we have a NAS, it's got HDMI, it's got four USB 2s on the back, one USB 3 on the front for backup or for transferring files or whatever, and there's also a card reader and a power jack with a power brick bus to power it. Um, it's two bay, you've got two three and a half inch drives, you can buy it without drives for 167 pounds, you can buy it with a one terabyte drive for 224. This was actually supplied to me with two four terabyte Seagate NAS drives, uh, priced 446, which actually seems for that sort of amount of storage relatively uh, cheap. Uh, I've got them uh, raided so they're mirrored, uh, so it's actually got four terabytes of capacity. Uh, now, the hardware running it, it's a dual-core ARM processor, which takes us back to the Android thing. So essentially, the hardware and the software, the, hard, the, the software probably thinks that this is a phone or a tablet or some such. So it's a dual-core ARM processor running at 1.1 gigahertz um, with a Mali 400 graphics, two gigabytes of DDR3 memory, four gig of flash memory, plus of course a hefty amount of storage on those hard drives. Uh, Android is relatively old and crusty. It's Android 4.4.4, obviously an Android 6 these days, Marshmallow. Um, but then you're not going to get a dual core processor of that sort of slowness running uh, later versions of Android. So I'd say that 4.4.4 is as good as it gets. Don't expect an upgrade. Now, why on earth would you want Android and a NAS married in the same device? It's certainly a peculiar thing. Um, you might think, well, my tablet is chock full of stuff. How do I get more stuff on there? Uh, adding flash memory difficult, although there are devices. This is one way of doing that. It's an Android device with a colossal amount of storage. Uh, even a one terabyte drive in, in phone terms is huge. Um, clearly the idea is that it's connected to your TV, in this instance a monitor, and then you watch your media files from your Android device, which also is a NAS. If that's your thing, uh, QNAP supplies a remote, which is quite sort of Chromecasty, uh, which is for running Kodi, uh, and that's all lovely. Now. How it works, so this is your QTS interface, but across the bottom you've got a bunch of very familiar Android buttons. Click on the home button and oh look, it's all getting a bit Androidy. QTS here is an app, you've got various other things, you've got Chrome there, and over there you've got the Play Store. If I click on the apps button, that's all looking very phone-like, and up there you can see I've actually installed Candy Crush, it's Jelly Crush. Um, which is quite a good game, uh, but it is rubbish on this setup, and the reason is because it's not designed for mouse and keyboard and a huge screen, it's designed for a small screen and touch interface, you know, you swipe things. So, um, that is not what this is about, it is very much about media, even though you can install games and such, like you want to be watching movies, playing music, that's what this is all about. If that's your bag and you want a huge amount of storage, uh, this is a very interesting way to go about it, but I know what you're thinking, what's inside the box? So that's the front of the unit, and if we turn around to the rear, we have the four USB 2 gigabit Ethernet and the jack for the power on the front, just that uh, USB 3 port and above a card reader. Turn to the bottom, and we have a simple thumb screw. And then we try and slide off the cover, which comes off quite neatly. And inside we have a pair of Seagate NAS drives. 
as like so. Uh, now this is actually a tool free design, these rails clip on the side. They're handed left and right and then the drives simply slide off like so. And if we take off the other and that slides out like so. Leaving us with not very much. Uh, obviously motherboard there, a little bit of a riser there for SATA and uh, there is a fan. Now the cooling fan there is actually for me one of the two annoyances of this NAS. Uh, the speed is uh, not good and that slightly annoys me but I can live with it uh, provided you take it on its own terms. Uh, if you want to run Android I assume it's uh, essential that you run um, ARM after your Android is for phone. If you start putting Pentium or something in it I, I imagine um, Android gets a bit peculiar. So the fact it runs ARM, no great surprise, dual core, it's cheapy, that's so be it. The fan, it makes a racket, it goes on and on and on and on. Um, when the thing was sitting there compiling the radar and such like for about a day and a half, uh, it really got my nerves. It's, it's not loud, it's just insistent. And it just strikes me that there can't be a massive amount of cooling to do in a system of this size. I would have thought that there would be a quieter, easier solution. Now in and of itself, it's not the end of the world, but the problem is, if you're going to put this NAS connect, if you're going to connect it to your TV as I assume you are, and I'm imagining the concept is you're going to have it in a kind of small apartment, studio apartment or some such, it's going to be near to hand. You want it to be quiet and this is simply not quiet and it strikes me it's unnecessary. I'd have thought that that fan there could be improved at a cost of pennies. So that's my complaint. Other than that, TAS268, it's a really interesting product. The, uh, the idea of running dual operating systems is weird and wacky. Do you want to run uh, Android apps on your NAS? Perhaps you do, perhaps you don't. It had never even occurred to me it was possible. Um, as soon as you have to go and have a good long sit down and think about what is now possible in the world of storage. But if you do want to run other software besides Q, uh, QNAP's own, this is certainly a way of doing it. The fact you won't be able to run Apple on it is a shame. The, the idea of a combined QTS Apple Android system would just be mind blowing. Uh, pricing, uh, two four, gig, uh, four terabyte drives is uh, a bit over the top. I mean, it's good for a NAS. For a thing like this, it seems way over the top because it seems to me that you want to be able to put more storage on uh, your Android device than, than generally you can with flash memory. A one terabyte drive is a colossal amount in that, in that context. So uh, I think the two four terabyte drives is over the top. In NAS terms, good. In this, con in this uh, context, not so sensible. Uh, TAS268, it is fascinating uh, and a complete breath of fresh air. Well done QNAP, deeply impressed. I'm Leo Wardock for Kit Guru.